Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Big shout out to Nick Shirley up there in the frozen tundra of Canada. Today's topic is because of him. He requested this one, but before we get into it, we need to do a quick wardrobe change. So here we go. Whoops, went a little too far. This is my Texas interview outfit. There we go, much better. Okay, so today's topic of discussion is building a resume for getting into the construction industry or just improving your resume if you wanna to go to a, a different company or just update your resume and keep it, you know, keep the dust off of it. So we're gonna start with guys who are getting into the industry. What exactly are employers looking for? I actually spent the morning calling around to about 20 or 30 different places to talk to, if not the owner, the HR individual responsible for taking in new resumes and applications. And I got their thoughts and their opinions on what they look for when it comes to new inexperienced operators getting into the industry. So the first thing by far and away that everyone is looking for in this industry is someone who is willing to stick to it. This is going to be demonstrated on your resume by showing that you have more than one year of experience at your previous employers. So if you're one of those individuals that has hopped jobs around every six to eight months, you're gonna have a lot more difficult time getting into this industry because that shows that you don't really have the ability to stick with a job. What employers want, especially in this industry where they're gonna have to take time to train you is, they want you to be there for the duration. And everyone recognizes in the excavating industry that the duration isn't five plus years. It's just a fact of the industry that operators jump around. And so if you can demonstrate that you've got one plus year experience at your previous employers, that's really gonna go a long way. Another thing that they're really looking for is that you're willing to learn. And we'll get into uh, interview techniques and kind of topics that you wanna bring up in your interview, but I had multiple HR people tell me that they really look for someone who is willing to learn and is eager to get into the trade, not because they just wanna make a paycheck, but because they actually like the trade and they want to be in the industry. So let's get into some details of what they actually look for. Outside of the one plus year of experience, I had two separate HR people tell me that one plus year experience is actually very important on a resume. So outside of that, trade schools. As much as you guys have heard me kind of poo poo trade schools, and I wanna be careful there because that's a whole other topic of discussion. Don't give me off track, keep me on track guys. So trade schools, list your trade schools. I actually had an HR individual tell me directly that she takes into account whether or not you've been to a trade school. It shows that you've taken an interest in the industry enough to go spend your money to learn part of the industry. And she's more willing to take a chance on people who have a trade school under their belt. Now that being said, as I've said in the past, that doesn't mean go out and everyone go to a trade school. I'm not saying that. I'm saying make sure you list that if you have been to a trade school and make it a decent chunk of your resume. Military experience is another one. If you're a previous military, whether it's in the reserve or active military, make sure you list that out as well. I talked to multiple employers and they said that's a really good indication that first of all, you're willing to work in tough conditions. Secondly, you're not gonna quit on them if things get a little tough. And third, you've been out in the elements. So now let's talk about some jobs that you might wanna focus on on your resume as opposed to other jobs. One of the job scenarios I discussed with one of the HR reps was, let's say you had an individual who had worked at Pizza Hut for four years and worked their way into a manager position, and they also on the same resume, in their same background, had a year of landscaping experience. Believe it or not, as I don't wanna discredit you for getting into a management role at Pizza Hut. That's great, that's a great accomplishment, and you should be proud of that but when it comes to this industry, you're actually going to wanna to focus more on your landscaping experience rather than the Pizza Hut job, simply because what that indicates is you can work outside in the elements, you understand that this is a difficult industry and it requires a lot of hard work, you're used to long hours, it's not in the air conditioning, it's not inside out of the elements, that's a really big indicator to someone in this industry that you'll be able to hack it and it's worth their time investing in you. The Pizza Hut experience, on the other hand, you might have been a fantastic manager, but that's inside, it's out of the elements, it's generally working pretty reasonable hours. It's not a really good indicator of how well you'll translate over into the heavy equipment industry. The other thing we're gonna talk about is if it's ever possible and whenever possible to work into your resume, make sure you work in that you're willing to learn and how good you are at learning new skills and new techniques because that's really important to employers in this climate where there's a lot of people that bounce in and out. 
They want people who are interested in the industry and they want people who are willing to learn. So we're really going to emphasize that on our resumes. So now let's flip gears and let's talk about experienced operators who maybe want to dust the cobwebs off of their resume and update it. Whether you plan on going someplace or not, it's always a good practice to keep your resume updated. So one of the first things I discussed with an HR individual about experienced operators is the biggest thing far and away is how long were you at your previous employers? You know, two plus years of experience tells them that you're not one of those operators that simply bounces from company to company, sometimes two or three times a year. It shows them that you're going to be there for at least a semi lengthy amount of time and it's worth the investment for them to hire you on. The second thing they're gonna look at is what machines can you run? And not just what machines you can run, can you finish blade? Can you rough grade? I mean, what can you do when you say you have dozer experience? Don't just put excavator experience. Tell them what size machines you're capable of running and what machines you have the most seat time in. Were you laying pipe? Were you doing site work? Were you digging footings? Were you digging basements? You need to indicate all of these things on your resume so that the employer knows what you actually can do outside of just pull sticks. Because let's be honest, anyone can list that they've run heavy equipment. Anyone can list that they've run a 385 excavator. I've run a 385 excavator for about six hours. I'm not a 385 excavator operator. That's just a fact of the matter. If you threw me in a 385 doing a 30 foot deep cut for sanitary sewer, I wouldn't have a clue what I'm doing. I would be totally out of my depth. So again, we're going to talk about actual experience on our resume. And this is for everyone that I'm talking to right now, whether you're inexperienced or experienced, be ready to back up what's on your resume. We can make the prettiest, floweriest resume that will get guys to actually look at you as an operator, and it doesn't matter if you get into the interview or you show up on the job and you can't back up the skills that you said you've done. So I do wanna be very careful here that we do wanna talk positively about ourselves, but we also wanna convey an accurate picture of what we're capable of. So with that being said, I'm gonna go change out of these ridiculous clothes. I got out of the banking industry so I wouldn't have to wear this stuff. I'm gonna get comfortable and then we're gonna dig into the resume building. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so that's much better. So now let's get back into it. We're gonna go over here to the computer and we're actually gonna take a look at my personal resume and then I'll kind of talk about a different couple points that we might change depending on your situation. So let's flip over here to the computer. The first thing I want you to notice is uh, this is a very clean outline. There's not a lot of fluff. There's not, we're not gonna go crazy with a different font. Um, we're, we're gonna keep it very simple, very straightforward. One of the biggest things you can do with your resume to turn employers off is to go crazy with fonts they can't read and a bunch of different sizes. You wanna keep it very neat, very concise. And by the way, I am going to put this resume template down in the comment section for you to download. So if you would like to use my resume template to start your resume on feel free to download this and change all of your information now I'm going to give you a very 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 big warning here please do not leave my information in your resume it will not serve you well it is not your work experience it's my work experience people in this industry can very easily and very quickly weed out when you're full of so all that being said you are more than welcome to use my template for your resume just change the information to be your own information. So let's go back here. So we've got my name, we've got my fake address. I don't know if you guys picked that up, but that's not actually where I live. Uh, and I've got it broken out very nicely. And then this would be my contact phone number here. Uh, and then we move down into the profile section. And the profile section is just kind of a general feel of what your capabilities are and what your competencies are. We're not gonna drill down into the nitty gritty as you're gonna see here. This is just kind of an overall, who is Brian and what is he capable of? And so for my profile, you can see, I have experience with both residential and heavy civil projects. I have a background in a corporate environment because as you guys have known from my channel, I have a banking background. Uh, but then I also have extensive field ex experience because I've been out in the field for the last 10 years. I'm an efficient finish dozer operator, but I also, I wanna make sure they know that I have large dozer experience. I'm very careful with my wording here. I'm very confident in my finished dozing abilities. I'm very confident in my hogging abilities as well. But what employers are looking for most of the time is can you finish grade with a dozer? And I can, and I'm very confident in that. I do, however, have some larger dozer experience, but it's limited. It's okay to talk about things you have experience with 
in a limited manner, but you have to be careful not to oversell yourself because that's where you run into problems with your employer if they choose to go forward with you. So you can see here, I do have larger dozer experience, but I make sure that I don't really play that up. So then I have excavator experience all the way from mini machines all the way up to 50 ton machines. Again, like I talked about, I have sat in a 385 and loaded trucks for about six hours before. I'm not putting a 385. I'm not saying that I have that 85 to 90 ton excavator experience on my resume because I really don't. I'm not a proficient operator in that machine. I've run it, but I'm not a proficient operator. So then it's capable of handling task heavy operations with little supervision. That's gonna give the employer an idea of, you don't have to babysit me. You can give me a bunch of things to do, or what I'm specifically referencing here is my experience as a loader operator on a pipe crew. You can give me a huge variety of tasks and I can handle all of those tasks without you having to babysit me all day. So that's a very important piece of information to put up there in your profile because that tells someone, okay, this guy knows how to think for himself. Then we're gonna move down into our work history section. And again, this is gonna be dependent totally upon you guys. If you are, and I've had a fair amount of you guys, if you are previous military and you just got out of the military, absolutely highlight that here in your work history section. Don't feel like that needs to be moved to the bottom and kind of relegated someplace else. Absolutely put that in there, that's gonna shine. Now, if you're not active military or if you didn't just get out of being active military and it's a little further back in your work history, don't worry about it. There's a section we're gonna to get to where we can still reference that military history without having it in your work experience. Your work experience needs to be in order starting your last job that you just came from to the oldest job. And you generally wanna do no more than three or four jobs because if you do more than that, it's gonna tell your employer that you bounce around a lot. And that is going to cause you problems because no one wants an employee that bounces around every six to eight weeks or six to eight months. So I was an outside sales representative with Southeastern Equipment. And I actually, believe it or not, I have gone in and edited this resume down from what it was before I made this video because I actually had this section beefed up a fair amount because the jobs I was pursuing were a little more geared towards that sales position and I really wanted to play up that experience. But you're gonna notice here, I actually took out a good two bullet points that were solid bullet points, but they don't really apply if I were applying to work as a heavy equipment operator again. And so I've actually shrank this section down so that I could expound on my experience in the field a little more. So here I prospected new customers via cold calls and site visits. I coordinated, or I'm sorry, I maintained existing customer relationships with regular contact. That shows people that I come back and I'm thorough and I keep following up. Uh, I coordinated equipment rentals and trucking. Yeah, the fact that you can coordinate, if you can talk about being able to coordinate, that's gonna go a long way with an employer because it means that you're a critical thinker. They don't have to sit there and babysit you if you're capable of coordinating these things. You can figure out where your haul trucks need to go if you run out of material here. That's not something that they have to continually monitor you. Uh, arrange financing, coordinated loaner machines, again, with the coordinating, anytime you can work that in there, that's a really good thing to do. Moving down, I was a heavy equipment operator and you've got my dates of employment there. I also want you to notice here, uh, when I start talking about Dan's excavating, in parentheses, I actually put what the focus was of that company. So if you have previous experience with landscaping or excavating or anything like that, uh, it's okay to emphasize kind of what your specialty was because at the end of the day, no one knows if you're not from Michigan, central Michigan, no one knows what Dan's excavating is. Is that a small 15 person company or is that a huge 300 person company? Is it a marine company? So it's okay to put a little small description like I've got here to kind of give the, your future employer an idea of what kind of company you were looking at. This is where we're gonna get into specifics and you can see my formatting's off when I, when I shuffled this over to Google Documents for whatever reason, the formatting's a little off. This needs to be all lined up here uh, when we come down to these lines. In fact, we can do that right now. I'm just gonna bump this. Maybe I'm not because I don't know how to use Google Docs. So what I would do is I would pull this. Oh, it did it, it did it. Look at that guys, it did it. It's just a little laggy for me. Oop, too far. So I'm not gonna do this, well maybe I will do this whole thing while we're doing the video here. And this is really important, as tedious as this is, formatting this and making it look nice is very important because attention to detail is something they're looking for. 
They want you to be able to know what you're doing. So we're just gonna clean this up a little bit here. Make sure all our bullet points are in line. So again, oh, that little dog snuck back over there. There we go, okay. So Dan's excavating. This is where you wanna get into the nitty gritty of what you actually did for your former employer. You're gonna notice I don't just say I ran dozers. Now, if I were applying for a sales position, yeah, I'd say I ran dozers and I would leave it at that. Next line, I ran excavators, I would leave it at that. I would probably focus a lot more on the material management that I did when I was running loader for a pipe crew or the number of tasks I was given or the fact that I was kind of helping to coordinate people on the job and trucking and all of that stuff. I wanna play into the strengths of the future job that I'm going for. But since we're looking to get a job as a heavy equipment operator, we need to dive into the details. They wanna know what machines, what size, what were you doing with them? So I operated CAT D6T, D6K, and D6N dozers doing rough and finish work. That's important. They need to know what you're capable of doing in that dozer because anyone can run a dozer, but can you finish grade with a dozer? That's important. Ran CAT 938 for various crews, including multiple pipe crews. You'll notice there I pulled pipe crews out specific. Anyone who's been in the industry will tell you that there's a big difference between someone who can just run a loader around and someone who can run a loader for a pipe crew. It's a very task heavy job. You're coordinating a bunch of different things. You're having to think ahead of where the crew is actually at. So it's really important to actually pull that out specific instead of just leaving it as I know how to run a loader. Uh, ran excavators ranging from a CAT 308 all the way up to CAT 349 and I was loading trucks and performing pipe work. Again there we're going to pull out those tasks separately because each one shows that you can do multiple things with those machines. I was commonly called on to assist with forecasting orders and job site materials. Again, this is referring to when I was running the loader for the pipe crew because I was in charge of telling the foreman when we were gonna run out of material and when we needed it. I had to give him a couple days notice. Again, this is gonna tell your employer, does this guy know how to think on his feet? Can he react on the fly? Can he make big decisions and help? And can we possibly, believe it or not, employers think about this when they're hiring you. Can we possibly move him into a foreman position down the road? Is he a candidate for some sort of management? Worked on large scale, heavy, uh, large scale civil projects, including highway and airport jobs. Tell them what exactly you did, not just big jobs. What big jobs, what have you done? And I was also a frequent point of contact between multiple crews, inspectors, foremen to organize tasks. Again, referencing the loader experience, but that's a yet another aspect that is very important to display. So I'm not gonna read through everything here. You guys can kind of do that on your own, but I do wanna move down to this section at the bottom where we go into education. This is where if you have a military history or you have some very relevant applicable experience, but it's further back in your work history, uh, we can absolutely do that in this section. So education, I went to college, I got a college degree. As always, you wanna put that in there if you have a degree. This would be a great place if you went to a trade school to put that certification. If you have any OSHA certifications, mining certifications, anything that's applicable to the industry that's not job experience related, but it's important to get on there, this is a great section to do that. And with relevant experience, I would absolutely throw in your military background, if you have landscaping background, if you have some sort of position that had you out in the elements, you wanna emphasize those things that we talked about earlier that employers are looking for. If you can't work that into your work history, this is a, a section where you can really pull those things out and you can highlight the fact that you do have relevant experience, you have some things that apply to the industry. So again, if you guys have any questions on this aspect of formulating the resume, don't hesitate to shoot me a message or comment down below. Uh, I have no problem doing some workshops if you guys wanna do that in the future. Perhaps on one of our live streams, we can gear one towards resume building specifically. I have no problem doing something along those lines. But now, now that we have this, this is a great form that you can email to someone, but if we wanna go deliver it in person, there's one more step that we need to do. And to do that, we need to go on a road trip. So with that being said, I'll see you in a minute. That's what we're shooting for. Okay, so here we are at Walmart in the home office section, and we're looking for this right here. 
So it doesn't make sense to do all of that work to make a really nice resume if you're not gonna put it on some decently nice paper. So don't put your resume on plain printer paper. And you can see, you can get like your basic, basic bottom of the line nice paper for $7.97. It's still gonna be kind of white color. I tend to lean towards something like this here. In fact, let's take it off. Where you can see you've got a little brown color to it. It's got a little texture. That's just me. Maybe you don't have a paper fetish like I do, but you feel like a million bucks when you print it on nice paper, so why not do it? So anyway, we're gonna grab one of these things of paper. It's gonna last me for, I don't know, 40 different job applications, and it's only costing us eight bucks, nine bucks. So let's go check out. All right, back to the house. And that's that. That's building a resume. That's what it takes to produce a well-refined document that will get an employer to at least consider you for a position at their company. So there's really not a whole lot to it. It is time consuming. I will say that just going through my work history and redoing that aspect of my resume probably took me about 20 to 30 minutes. So it's not terrible, but it does take a little time. Spend the time doing it. It's well worth it. This is your first impression to your future employer. So make it count. Make sure you don't have any misspellings. One thing I did want to point out too, you'll notice I had a lot of big words on that resume. I don't use big words every day. Great tip. Write your resume out. Even if you use the same words for multiple items on your resume, write it all out. And then take some of those words that you use a lot, go to Google and search for synonyms of the same word. That way you can vary the way you're saying things so it's not repetitive, but it still gets that meaning across. I use the word extensive extensively all the time. And so it's gonna come off as being very repetitive and very redundant if I just keep using it over and over. So I went to the good old Google and got a synonym and that's how I get words like in-depth and knowledgeable and other things that I use in place of extensive. So that's just another helpful tip for you guys. So I hope this has been helpful. As always, comment down below with any questions and we'll catch you guys on the next video.